Philippians chapter number 4. And we all know Philippians chapter number 4 verse 13, right? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But we're not going to get that far into the chapter this morning. I've titled this message, Finding Peace in Christ. And I hope it helps. It's, uh, I, I'll, just, I'll say this, I had to swallow this pill before y'all did. Um, so while I was swallowing it uh, uh, yesterday and, and part of the day uh, Friday, I finally got it choked down and, and I feel like this is the way the Lord wants us to go this morning. But if you found your place in Philippians chapter number 4, stand with me. And we're going to start in verse 4. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Uh, I'll say it like an Alabamian. Don't worry about nothing. Okay? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication... With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's a, uh, that's a pretty bold statement in verse 11. Well, look at that last part again. It says, in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So Paul says, I have learned whatever I'm going through. I have learned if I'm in a bad mood, if I'm in a good mood, if I'm going through a storm, if it's smooth sailing, I have learned to be content with it. It's pretty bold. Let's have prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we ask that uh, as we get into this message, Lord, that you'd speak to our hearts. Lord, that you would uh, show us, uh, that you would convict us of something this morning. Lord, we know we're not perfect. No Christian is. But Lord, we ask if there's something here this morning in these, in these words that, that speaks to our heart, that lets us realize that we're not living up to what you've asked us to do, that you would talk to us, that you would speak to us, that you would help us, that you'd minister to us. And Father, as we get into this hour, I ask, Lord, that you'd make the preaching hour easy, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So Philippians chapter number 4, and if you've never really sat down and read Philippians, it's a beautiful book. Um, the church at Ephesus and the church at, at, at Galatia and, and Philippi and uh, Corinth, they, they all have a different, uh, I guess kind of a different viewpoint, a different uh, message for the churches. Um, we, we know that uh, Corinth, uh, the church at Corinth had a lot of division. Right, there, there are two, uh, two Corinthians, but uh, Paul speaks a lot about division and, uh, and discontent in the book of Corinthians. Um, in the book of, of Galatians, there's a lot of doctrinal issues. Um, they're, they're trying to live by the law, and they're trying to, to, to live through faith, and, and we know you can't do both, right? You can't mix and match. It's, uh, that's not the way it works. So um, Paul says in Galatians that, um, those things that I've taught you and those things that, that I've preached to you, you've kind of gotten off, off kilter a little bit. But then you get over to the book of Philippians, and it's like a love letter. If, if you read the, the book of Philippians, um, Paul is so in love with the Philippian church. 
Um, they, they've stayed true to the doctrine. Um, they've listened and they, they've taught the things that, that uh, Paul has taught them. Um, I, I think, uh, as a matter of fact, in the, in the first chapter, in the fifth verse or third verse, it says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. That's how much he cared for the Philippian church, and it's because they stayed true. Um, they stayed true to the word of God and, and what he's taught them. It's, uh, it's evident that he has a warm and affectionate tone for the Philippians. So if you haven't read it, I encourage you to sit down and read the book of Philippians um, because it makes me realize just how not good of a Christian I can be sometimes, right? So we're going we're gonna to get into this study this morning, and we're going to look about finding peace in Christ. Because we know the world doesn't want us to have peace. Um, the world will kick you down whenever it gets the chance. Um, there are sometimes I work 60 hours a week. There are sometimes I work 40 hours a week. But it don't matter. I still feel like I'm kicked down on, on Saturday. And I come Sunday and I feel like I'm getting kicked down out the door when I'm trying to get to church. The devil's saying, I don't want you to be there. And, and Brother Boyd in Sunday school was talking about how the devil is always trying to trip us up. The devil doesn't want us to have peace in Christ. He wants us to think we can have peace in Him. But our true peace comes from, from God. Our true peace comes from Jesus Christ. So if you, if, if you don't mind, look back at verse number 5. Look back at verse number 5 and it says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Um. Moderation here doesn't mean what it means when you go to the buffet. Okay? Moderation doesn't mean go up there and get enough fried chicken that you're not too full. Moderate yourself. What moderation means in this verse is gentleness. It means to be lowly. It means to be meek. So he's saying here, let your gentleness be known to all men. It's hard sometimes. It's hard for people to see your gentleness when the world is the way the world is. Uh, we, we know that, uh, you know, Jesus was lowly and meek. It says it in Matthew. I'm, I am lowly and meek. As a matter of fact, I think it's Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29. Right after he says, come unto me, all ye that are laboring and heavy laden. He says, come unto me, for my burden is light. My, my yoke is light. I am, I am meek and lowly. All right, so the Bible tells us to make our moderation known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Listen, not everyone's a Christian. We all know people that go to church and they say, I'm a Christian. But then you see them on Monday and they're not so much a Christian. All right, I can tell, I hope that if I see any of y'all on a Monday, y'all are the same way on a Monday as you are on Sunday. Right? That's your moderation. That's your gentleness. Right? I shouldn't see you on Monday and you've had a tough day at work um, at 5 o'clock and I'm going to the grocery store and I see you and you just look at me, scowl and walk off. Right? We all have hard days. We all have hard days. It's okay. In a world often marked by harshness, our gentle demeanor is a testament to the presence of Christ in our lives. Um, you know, I preached uh, a few weeks ago on, on being the salt of the earth. Right? We're to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. We're to be a beacon of light for all those that are lost because there's a lot of them. If you don't have anything to pray for, pray for the, the lost. There's a lot of them. I, I have friends. I have coworkers. I have family. They're all lost. But in the harshness of this world... The light that's within us should be a testament to everyone else. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Don't forget, out the, don't forget that word. It doesn't say by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to God. It says with thanksgiving let it be made known unto God. Um, this is one that I, I wrestle with. And here's my point to the, this verse and, and verse 7. Let, let's read verse 7. It says, The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts 
and minds through Christ Jesus. This is the one I struggle with, and, and what, I've, what I've put down here is replace anxiety with prayer. Um, there are some times when I, uh, I lay my head down at night um, that my mind goes crazy. And all the things that, that happened that day, for some reason, Matt says, Oh no, it's 11 o'clock, I've got to think about this. I've got to get anxious about this. I'm anxious all the time. My wife will catch me chewing on my lip, I get so anxious. I chew on it because I get anxious. Instead, I should replace that anxiety with prayer. I should replace it. There's a, uh, there's a show. I, I, don't remember, I don't remember what streaming outlet it's on. Um, but it's about uh, murderers. Y'all, stay with me. I'm not taking this down the, the wrong way. It's about murderers. And it's these people that go in and they interview these murderers. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So instead of the victim or the victim's family getting what they deserve, a chance to speak about their loved one that they lost, Hollywood decides, hey, we're going to interview the one that killed them. Right, because that's exactly who should get the, the glory, right? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think the murderer that committed the crime should get the interview. I don't think they should get the attention. Well, let me tell you what happens when we're anxious instead of praying. When we're praying, we're talking to God. He's got your undivided attention. When you're anxious, guess who gets your attention? Are y'all following me? When you're anxious, who gets your attention? Well, the same the, the, the murderers that get the interview or the murderers that, uh, that get the attention instead of the family, we're doing the same thing every day. I do it. I get worried. I get anxious. I get upset. I get frustrated. And guess who gets my attention? It's not God. I mean, hey, God knows you're frustrated, but when you're frustrated, you're giving him exactly what he wants. You're giving him exactly what he wants. He doesn't want to see us at peace. We've already talked about that. He wants to see us frustrated. He wants to see us upset. He wants to see us anxious. He doesn't want us peaceful. He doesn't want us praying. He doesn't want us talking to God. He wants us to be anxious. So we should replace our anxiety with prayer. Every time you get anxious, every time you get worried about something, you should pray. Um, I, I heard a message by uh, brother or Dr. David Gibbs, and it was uh, talking about how when you, when you try to do it yourself first or uh, when, you, when you go to God in prayer after the fact, you've just made God your second option. Right? We've seen the bumper stickers that say, Jesus is my co-pilot. Why is he not your pilot? Right? A co-pilot only grabs the, the, the steering column when you can't handle it. Right? God says he can handle it all the time. Are y'all following me? Hey, God wants your prayers. He wants to talk to his children. He delivered you. He died for you. He bled for you. He wants to talk to you. Uh, every day, Sister Simone calls Sister Vicky. Every day. She would think something's wrong if, if my wife didn't call her every day. God wants to hear from you every day. Not just when you're sitting down to eat. Right? He wants to hear from you every day. You don't have to be at home or, or kneeling next to your bed or or at church to pray to God, you can do it while you're driving your car. God wants to hear from His children. Uh, there are a couple times I'll call the pastor uh, every week, but there are some times I'll wait three or four days and, and I'll say, oh boy, I hadn't called him in three or four days. You think God's thinking that about us? Well, I hadn't talked to Brother Matthew in three days. Replace your anxiety with prayer. Paul says, be thankful for nothing. Which means, 
Don't worry about anything. You shouldn't worry. Worry is a sin. Worry is a sin. What I I say about Dr. David Gibbs, he says, you just made God your second option. If you're worrying and you don't have everything that you have in God's hands, we're supposed to give everything to God. He says, be careful for nothing, but by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Look at verse 7. It says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can I tell you what keep means in this this verse? It means to guard. It means to guard your heart. Read it one more time and we're going to put guard in there. It says, And the peace of God, which passeth, passeth all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It'll guard it. It'll put up a wall around it. Everybody knows what a guard is. Jesus said, I'm going to guard your heart from whatever's going on in your life. I'm going to guard your heart from your anxiousness. I'm going to guard your heart from this crazy world. It's not on you, right? When we get saved... Um, we're, we're to deny ourselves, right? We're supposed to admit that we're a sinner and believe that Christ died for us and deny ourselves, right? So what the Bible's saying here in verse 7 is, I'm going to guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus from all the things that you're going through. Those times when you can't find peace, you can find it in me. I'm going to guard your heart. Uh, Those times when you're feeling anxious, you're going to find your peace in me as long as you use prayer and not anxiety. As long as you bring me your problems and don't let him hear it. Bring me your problems. Look at verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. We know the world is, is ungodly. Right? We see it every day. We see murder. We see uh, abortion. We see homosexuality. We, we see the ugliness of the world. Right? But what Paul said here is, all of these things, if they're true, if they're honest, if they're, if they're just, whatever, whatever things are pure, think on those. Um, I'm, I'm just as bad as anybody else. But I'll be scrolling through Facebook, and I'll see something from WAFF 48. And it says, Decatur man uh, captured after murder of girlfriend. Whatever it is. You know what my mind does? It says, man, that guy's evil. I can't believe that. Five minutes later, I'm right back to it. Man, I can't believe that guy did. There was somebody that burned their their wife alive. I'll I'll use that as an example. It was a couple weeks ago. And all I could think was, what's going through his mind? How ungodly is that? What was he thinking? And can I tell you something? I dwelled on that for two hours. What does Paul say? All of those things that are good, think on these things. But we as a people, when we see something bad or or see something that we don't agree with or see something that's ugly or ungodly, what do we dwell on? We dwell on the ungodly things, right? We we think on the ungodly things. Um, Andrea's going to school right now, and, and I know they are teaching her things at school that they shouldn't. So what do I do? I think on those things. Paul says, think on these things. And that's kind of hard. Right? It's, it's much easier to think on the negative and ugly things of life than it is to think on the good ones. When I was in the uh, Army, I don't know if we have any Army uh, anyway, we used to do these things. We would, uh, we would go out on these field training exercises or, or when I was in Afghanistan, we'd go on convoys and we'd get back 
and we'd do something called an after actions report, an AAR. And what it is is we had to give three good things that we did, three bad things that we did, and three things that we're going to change immediately, three things that we're going to improve upon immediately. Can I tell you, it's a whole lot easier to come up with things that we did bad than it is good. I'm my own worst critic. It's a whole lot easier for us to think on the things that are ungodly and deny the things that are good. Let's read that one more time. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let's talk about our prayer list for a second. We know that cancer is an ugly thing. But we know we've had answered prayers on our cancer list, right? We've had answered prayers on the, on the regular list where people are just going through tough times or, or maybe they lost a loved one. Um, let me ask you something. How often do you thank God for the answered prayers and not focus on the, on the 22 that have cancer? I'm not saying don't pray about them. Absolutely, we need to pray about them. But when you're sitting at home, sitting in your recliner, instead of saying, God, I can't believe how many people have cancer, say, God, thank you for what you've done for those that have come off this list. Whatever things are pure and lovely, think on these things, if there be any virtue. Look at uh, verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Um, Andrea has heard it before. Uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Anybody ever said that to their kids? Paul says, do what I do. Those things which you've heard me say, you've seen me do, do. I don't know that I can say that. I don't know that I can say those things that I do, go ahead and do it. Paul saying, if you want to find peace, if you want to be the Christian that God's called you to be, then you be the, the Christian God's called you to be all the time. Let your moderation be known unto all men, and you'll have no problem with verse 9. This says, these things that you've seen and heard do. If you've let your moderation be known unto all men, you shouldn't have a problem with that. But if you get out there on a Monday and you're not the same Christian you were on Sunday, it's going to be hard to say, hey, those things that I did on Monday, go ahead and do those. Are y'all follow me? God says you can find peace in Christ if you let your moderation be known unto men. If you do these things, if you, if you dwell on those things that are true and those things that are honest, and those things that are lovely, if you think on those things, you'll have no problem finding peace in Christ. Uh, it is so easy to get wrapped around the axle about the things that don't matter. You can only control what you can control. We get so wound up about things that we can't control. We, hey, it's 98 degrees outside. I get wound up about it, but guess what? I can't control it except getting in my truck and turning the air conditioner on. Right? But we get so wrapped around the axle about things that we can't control. Look at verse 9. Or excuse me, verse 11. It says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's like patience and tribulation, right? We, we've, we've read that in the Bible. Have patience and tribulation. Paul's saying, I have learned whatever I'm going through to be content. A guy that's been snake bit, thrown in prison, blinded, beaten, he says, I've learned to be content. Remember when he asked God to remove that thorn out of his flesh three times? Begged him, Lord, take it out. He said, nope, because I'm stronger in weakness. Paul says, I've learned. 
out of all the things that I've been through, I've learned to be content with what God's given me. God blesses us. I'm a blessed man. I've got a great family. I've got a great home. I've got a great job. I've got a lovely church. I've got wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ. But when God doesn't give me what I want, am I content with it? There's a reason. God has a plan. We don't know His plan. We try to understand His plan, but the Bible tells us to not lean on our own understanding. But we're still going to try because that's who we are. But Paul says, if you can learn to be content in whatever state you're in, you'll have no problem finding peace in Christ. You'll have no problem finding peace. You'll be happy. And sometimes it's, it's hard to be happy in the things that we're going through. But the Bible tells us that we should be. I think the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. It doesn't say for everything. It doesn't say, oh, i got a splinter in my toe, I should be happy about it. It says, in everything, give thanks. In every season, um, we all know that life goes through seasons. Life goes through times. There, there's a time to live and a time to die, right? It says that in Ecclesiastes. There's a time to mourn and a time to rejoice. There's a season for everything in our lives. We should be happy and, and have peace we should rejoice. What does verse 4 say? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We should be happy and content in whatever situation God puts us in. Even though it's not easy. We should be happy. Hey, I'm going to heaven. I'm happy. This is just, this is not my home. I'm a pilgrim passing through. I'm going to heaven. I'm happy. Uh, a lot of y'all that know me know I'm the goofiest guy around. I'm, I'm happy all the time. Even when things don't require for me to make a joke or be happy, I'm happy. Might be a defense mechanism, but I'm happy. I found peace in Christ. That's not to say I don't get upset. That's not to say I don't fall way short of where I'm supposed to hit. But we should find peace in Christ. Look at verse 9 for me. Let's look at this one one more time. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace might be with you. Right? It says, shall be with you. What I'm telling you today, church, is the church at Philippians, they stayed true to their faith. They stayed true to the teachings. Paul said, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. They stayed true. And if we'll stay true, and we'll find that peace, and we'll, we'll dwell on those things that Paul said to dwell on, and we find contentment in all of our situations, the God of peace shall be with you. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this church. We're thankful for this opportunity that you've given us today to, to come to church and to worship you and to, uh, to learn more about you and to worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ because the Bible tells us not to for, forsake the assembling of ourselves. We ask you, dear God, if there's anyone here this morning that can't find that peace, Lord, that you'd help them. Lord, that as they're going throughout their week and they're reading their Bible or, or they're listening to preaching or, or they're talking to another Christian, another brother or sister in Christ, Lord, that you would just hear their cry for help and that you'd touch their hearts. Lord, that you'd strengthen us each and every day to be a, a better Christian than we were the day before, to be a true child of God, to be, to be that beacon of light, to be content with what you've given us and and Lord, to make our moderation known to, so people can see us in our gentleness and our meekness and our lowliness and our long-suffering. Lord, that we could be more like you. Thank you for these that are here this morning. Now we pray that you would speak to hearts in this invitation. Thank you for the liberty that you've given us today. In Jesus' name, amen.